how does one proceed with coming overcoming their porn addiction when they're extremely depressed? Yeah, that. I mean, what comes first, the cart or the horse? Are we depressed because of our addiction? Are we engaging in an addiction because we're depressed? And that's part of this cycle. Oftentimes, you know, um, I had one client who. Uh, teenager who was addicted to marijuana and he was he was smoking a lot um, essentially uh, he was flooding his serotonin receptors because he came from a family where depression was prevalent in the entire family system and this is really common these teenagers you know sometimes they're smoking because it's just the in thing to do but if they're not producing enough serotonin all of a sudden it becomes this hugely addictive fix that their brain is literally looking at as this miracle but what happens is they develop an addiction and it starts just destroying it starts destroying their memory receptors it starts destroying other parts of their brain because of the extreme use and it can become devastating so this you know this individual came into my office and the parents were sitting there you know they were just not being kind to this young man because they were so tired of his addiction and when we found out that their whole family was on antidepressants <laughs> And he was, he wasn't, it was like this breakthrough, and they're like, oh my gosh, he is self-medicating to try to process that depression, and to try to fix that depression. So once they went into a doctor, and they got multiple opinions, and they found a solution that worked for him to help in his serotonin levels, it became not easy because he was addicted at that point, but it became more manageable for him to really have a desire to get on top of his addiction. And so when someone's struggling with depression, it's one thing to say, hey, you know, go journal and exercise and communicate with people daily and you won't be depressed. But when someone's depressed, they don't feel like getting out of that pit in the first place. And so that's a really hard thing. And so I really commend individuals to, with depression who take those hard steps to really get sober because when someone gets sober, when someone makes that very painful, because it is a painful decision, it's short-term painful with long-term benefits. Using a drug or an addiction or pornography gives us short-term benefits with long-term, often devastating emotional consequences. So it's almost like saying, I am going to go through pain temporarily and I accept this. I surrender to this fact that I might even be a little bit more depressed. You know, who made the rule that says we can't be depressed as human beings? That that makes us these bad, terrible people. Most of us experience some kind of depression in our lives, whether it's due to grief because of loss, loss of job, uh, whether we're just not chemically balanced or as we age, some people stop producing as much serotonin or dopamine. And so most people will go through some kind of depression. So accepting that depression as a normal part of life is often a step in finding the courage to go take additional steps to go through the healing process or find a medication or find a natural solution or find find the drive and the desire to really go through those painful processes of withdrawal within an addiction and inevitably as we get sober our neuroreceptors will begin to balance again and as they begin to balance, depression has a tendency to reduce. But when someone's in a deep, dark pit of depression, the limbic system is screaming at them in this cycle, use to feel temporary numbness, to numb the pain. But the problem is, is it's messing up those neuroreceptors in an unsustainable way, and so it contributes to deeper depression. So getting out of that dark pit can be a very, very difficult thing. And for individuals who are struggling with major depressive disorder where it's been going on for a long, long time and you just have not felt like associating with people or really getting out of your bed or going to work and it's been going on for a long time, go get some help from a licensed therapist. You know, do that favor to, you, to yourself because you deserve, you deserve to be healthy. Um, I encourage you to pull out of that shame space that says, well, I'm not good enough, so I deserve to be in this place because look at all the terrible things I've done. There is not a single person that doesn't deserve to go through a healing process and be happy. You deserve it. I deserve it. Tony here deserves it. We all deserve 
to do everything within our power to be happy. No matter how dark that pit has gotten, there is ability to redeem and to heal and to go through that process and to be happier in our lives. I've seen people in the darkest of the dregs who have done behaviors that you might look at and say, well, they don't deserve to be happy, but they're able to go through healing, and although they can't change the past, they can set a brighter path for their future. 